Sundown Undead is an audio drama containing strong language, violence, sexual innuendo, reference to drug use, and political humor. All characters' and names are fictional. Listener discretion is advised. This is the real deal. I can promise that with this drug, nobody would dare touch you. Well, of course. Now listen here, you goat fucker. I'm not in the business of patriotism or this, oh, look at me, I'm an American, I care about the environment. Let's save the planet, blah, blah, blah. I want the money, and so much of it that I can rule the world. I want power. I want the world to kneel before me and smile while they suck my cock. Uh Uh-huh. I can't divulge too much over the phone, but this drug can revitalize and repair damaged cells. Uh Uh-huh. It can essentially revive the bodies of the recently deceased. Think about it. Fewer casualties, less disease. You'd be a hero. Soon. Very soon. There are just a few more pieces left to fall into place. All right, very well. We'll be in touch. Bye. Steven, where the hell is my protein shake? I'll be right there. Get in here! I have your shake right here, sir. And what kind of milk did you use? Uh, uh, I used yak's milk. Uh, It's what you asked for, sir. (sighs) You poor, dumb bastard. I guess you're so poor you wouldn't understand. Yak's milk was so five months ago. Nobody drinks yak's milk anymore. But but you just started asking me to use it last week. Enough! I said you're too damn poor to understand. I need platypus milk. So call Cuba or whatever stupid fucking country breeds platypussies and start using it to make my shakes. Uh, yes, sir. We're taking a trip to the lab. There's a duffel bag in the corner. Bring it. Okay, Steven. Tell me about your day. Well, I've just been working on adjusting your schedule like you- Shut up! Jesus, your life is boring. Oh, right. Of course. And for Christ's sakes, I told you to stop wearing white dress shirts to work. We sell drugs, not Bibles. Yes, sir. Can I ask what we're doing down in the lab? We're going to have a chat with Dr. Wong. Dr. Wong! Well, good morning, Mr. Blackstone. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Dr. Blanche. I didn't realize you'd be here. There's always work to be done. I have a meeting with the CDC coming up. I'll be discussing the life-saving effects of your new drug. I need all the data you have and a sample. I'm sorry, but we're a long way from even discussing human trials. I know this! It's a preliminary meeting, just business. I need everything in place for when it's ready. Get me what you have. Uh, here. But remember, we have a contract. Once it's ready, I get ten years, Blackstone. Ten years, this drug can only be available for life-saving procedures at an affordable cost to the public. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Where's the data report? In the cabinet by the centrifuge. Dr. Blanche, would you mind grabbing it for Mr. Blackstone? Yeah. Okay.
Here it is. Perfect. I want both of you to listen very carefully. I am not here to entertain bullshit fantasies of saving the planet or whatever the fuck Dr. Wong thought he could do with my drug. Dr. Blanche, I'm going to need you to focus entirely on continuing Dr. Wong's work. Do you understand? Enough with the crying! You will do what I say and remember who it is you work for. And if you ever think of telling anyone what happened here, I'll sell your fucking eyeballs in the black market. You understand me? Yes. Yes. I understand, Mr. Blackstone. Good. We're all on the same page. I'll add an additional $50,000 to your salary to compensate you for your trouble. Steven, put Dr. Wong inside that duffel bag and make him disappear. No evidence. Got it? Uh, I... Yes, sir. Oh, and Dr. Blanche, I need you to pour the sample into an envelope. Uh, uh, Mr. But nothing. I'll find some dumbass to bring down a briefcase. You'll put the envelope inside the briefcase. Make it inconspicuous. Well, looks like you two have a busy day. I'm going to the gym. Good talking with you guys. What's wrong with that man? He is pure evil. We have to report this. No way. You saw what he did. He's been doing this a long time. He... He's too powerful. Listen, Tom. Buddy. (laughs) I'm not your buddy. Come on now. Why would you say a thing like that? Because you fucked my wife, Jerry. Tom, that was years ago. You gotta let that go. Then quit sending photos from your affair to my office on our anniversary. I did that once. Last year, you sent me a mug that said, Once you go Blackstone, you never go back. (laughs) Yeah, it's true, though. Anyways, listen, Finkman, I know we've had a rough past. What I'm proposing will launch both our companies to new heights. A merger, Tom. What did you just say? That's right. I want to merge our companies. We'll be unstoppable. Think about it. Blackstone and Finkman. We'll call ourselves Blackstone. You're not getting rid of my name, Jerry. Yeah, whatever. We can work out the details later. So what exactly are you proposing? You know we've been making amazing progress with our research into cellular enhancement and repair. You're not talking about... Yes. Alpha LR4. We're getting close, but I need your help. With our combined resources, we can be ready for human trials by the end of next year. I'm skeptical. Jerry, but we can set up a meeting. How about next month? (laughs) Next month? (sighs) That's not going to work, Tom. We're meeting Friday at 4 o'clock at the Sundown Hotel. That's not going to work for me. (sighs) I think you should reconsider. I'll have my assistant book your hotel and flight reservations. First class, of course. Okay, Jerry, I'll go. But the moment I smell something fishy, I swear to God, Jerry, we're going to war. And in case you haven't been watching the stocks, you might not have the resources to win. (laughs) Yeah, isn't that something? Well, it's been a pleasure doing business with you, pal. See you Friday. Bye. Come in. Good morning, sir. You wanted me to come see you when I got in? Oh, yeah? I did, didn't I? You know, I was thinking, Stevie boy. You've been working so hard you deserve a little recognition. Wouldn't you agree? I guess so. I I do work pretty hard. You can consider me a friend, wouldn't you, Steve? Well, I don't know if that's the best way to describe it. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel. Great friends. Uh... Look, I got you a present. I was going to wait until your two-year anniversary next month, but I just couldn't wait. My five-year anniversary was two weeks ago. Exactly. Just like I said. Long overdue, you know? Okay, so check it out. You're flying out at 10 a.m. I'm having one of the goober taxis pick you up and bring you to my airfield. And you'll take my helicopter. You're going to stay the weekend at... Wait for it. Drumroll. The Sundown Hotel. I've never heard of it. Beautiful. Okay, one more thing. 
I need you to bring this briefcase to Tom Finkman. It turns out, and what a coincidence, he told me he was going to be staying there on Friday too. Do not, under any circumstances, let anyone but Finkman open that briefcase. Comprende? Yeah. No problem. Perfect. You get out of here and start packing. No need to tell anybody about this trip. I'd have to kill your family if you did. Huh? You what? Yeah. Damn, that would suck. Who knows? Maybe I'll see you back here on Monday. What's that supposed to mean? All right, Steven. Don't be that loser waiting for chicks after the bar closes. Get the fuck out. Uh, okay. Governor McPatton. Michael, I have to call in a favor. Are you out of your goddamn mind, man? No way in hell I can do that. Oh, Mikey. You don't have a choice. I remember, not long ago, you came to me and asked me to help take care of a certain senator that kept getting in your way. Now you have two choices. You can honor our original agreement and build a wall between us and New Mexico, or you can stage a terrorist attack. God damn, Jerry. Building a wall between us and New Mexico? That was a joke. You know where I stand. I don't believe in immigration. But New Mexico is already a part of the U.S. What? (sighs) And we're too late. Damn it, McPatton. This is your fault. Fine. How can I help you? You're going to call in the FBI and get one of those dirty directors over there to conjure up evidence to support a terrorist plot at the Sundown Hotel. And what makes you think I've got any pull over there? Because I have two million dollars for you to bribe them with. And because if you don't, I'll destroy your life. I don't think you know what you're asking for. Even if, if, I get one of those guys on board, they have to knowingly send one of their own agents in there. That's not my problem. Fine. Have someone drop off the details by 8 o'clock tonight. But after that, Jerry, we are done. Do you hear me? We are through. Yep, I'll have someone bring you a folder with everything you need to know. Thanks, buddy. I owe you one. I am not your buddy. (laughs) That's a good one. (sighs) Man, you are always one for jokes. (laughs) Something is seriously wrong with you. (laughs) You're too much, Mike. I'll catch you later. I'm not your buddy, he says. What a fucking riot. (laughs) Yeah, faking it isn't the hard part. We do that all the time. It's finding an agent that nobody is going to miss. I think I may have someone in mind. I'll let you know when everything is arranged. Yes. Okay, that'll work. I'll get on that right now. Bye. Hey, Daniels, have you seen Director Billings since your last shit storm? Not yet. Word around the office is that they're really gunning for you. I have no idea what they're going to do with me. <laughs> My bet is that they'll shit can your ass. Come on now, isn't this like your 20th incident since you've been here? So what? I've made some mistakes. Some pretty big mistakes. You don't have to be an asshole. I'm already stressed enough. Hey, is it true what everyone's saying? (sighs) That you- No, whatever they're saying isn't true. (laughs) Are you sure? Because stealing 15 kilos of cocaine straight from the Mexican cartel would be pretty badass. Huh? That's what people are saying about me? Is Brian still in the hospital? Daniels, I need you in my office ASAP. Yes, ma'am. On my way. Ooh, here it comes. It was nice knowing you. You called for me, ma'am? Agent Daniels, come in. Close the door and have a seat. How long have you been with the Bureau, Ms. Daniels? Three years, ma'am. And how many disciplinary reports have you had in that time? I, well... Uh, It's not a hard question, Agent Daniels. How many disciplinary reports have you had? Three. I've had three, ma'am. And one pending, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And how is your partner doing, by the way? Okay, I suppose. His doctors say he's expected to make a full recovery. Do you blame yourself for the incident? All the time. I know what it's like. To be sitting there where you are, 
I've been there myself. A young agent, hungry to do the job. People like us need purpose. We need to feel like we're serving the greater good. Do you agree? Yes, ma'am. As far as the Bureau is concerned, I'm supposed to be firing you right now. But please... I'm going to make you a proposal, Miss Daniels. A very serious case has been brought to my desk. And it requires special handling. We're potentially facing a large terrorist plot. Chemical warfare. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives are at stake. Chemical warfare? I thought we have a different department for that. God damn it. I need someone who isn't afraid of bending the rules to get shit done. Someone with a backbone. I'm coming to you because I know you care more about justice than some bullshit policy. You've got bigger balls than every man in this bureau. Yes, ma'am. What can I do? We have reason to believe that the Pakistani government has been working with a pharmaceutical company and sending groups to the states to launch a series of chemical attacks. We need you to go undercover. Everything you need to know is in this folder. Here, take it. We're sending you in to intercept the first sale. It's a small, upscale hotel in Sundown. This is highly classified. Nobody can know what you're doing. I'm honored that you consider me for this assignment, ma'am. I won't let you down. You'll be sent with backup. Two security contractors. They'll make sure you're safe. So what's next? Everything you need to know is in that folder. Pack up everything at your desk. Take it home. Until this mission is complete, as far as anyone in the office is concerned, you no longer work here. Huh? It's the way things have to be. Or would you prefer I give it to someone else? No, I can handle it. Good. You'll make your country proud. Now, get out of here and get ready. You'll be flying out first thing in the morning. When you get back, you can be sure your job here at the Bureau will be waiting. Thank you, ma'am. You won't regret this. Good. Aren't you going to tell us? What happened in there? Oh, no way! Are they giving you the boot? I knew it! You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Billings was really working with the cartel. She just has that vibe to her, you know? Come on, you gotta give me something. See you later, asshole. That's hardly necessary. Hey. How'd your hearing go? Billings fired me. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Sarah. It's not your fault. I got myself into this mess. No. You don't get to do that. None of this was your fault, Sarah. We were just... We were just doing our jobs. Sometimes these things just happen. God forbid, I... <coughs> I'd never be able to live my, with myself if it were you in this bed instead of me. I guess I'm struggling with that, too. So... So what now? Billings offered me another case. A chance for redemption. What kind of case? I can't say much about it. I guess it's some next-level high-clearance stuff. I probably said too much already. Be careful. <laughs> you know Billings doesn't care about anyone but herself. It doesn't sound strange to you. She just she just fired you. Now she's turning around and giving you some some high level black ops case. I I don't know, Sarah. I'm worried about you. Look, Brian. You've just got to trust me. Promise you won't mention this to anyone. <sighs> I, I promise. But please, promise me that the moment this starts to look sketchy, 
You get the hell out of there. I, I can't lose you, Sarah. Uh, I promise. I've got to get packing. I leave in the morning. I'll be here. I know. Talk to you later. Bye. All right, I've got dress pants, dress shirt. Shit, but Mr. Blackstone said no white shirts. Okay, what about blue? What do you think, Mittens? How does the blue look? Yeah, I thought the white looked better too, but I've got to listen to the boss. <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. He kind of sucks. I'll tell you what, Mittens. When I get back, I'm going to find another job. We'll leave this shitty town and go somewhere we're appreciated. Hello? You said you were going to call by 7. It's 7.02. What are you doing? Sorry, I'm still packing. How long does it take you to pack for a weekend? Where are you going, by the way? I told you, my boss is sending me on another business trip. You need to start telling that man no. I swear, Stephen. Sometimes I wonder if I need to be looking for a real man. You can be a real pussy. You don't understand. My boss is not the guy you want to butt heads with. Wow. Spoken like a true pussy. I'll let you get back to packing, but don't forget your tampons. Oh my god, what a fucking loser. <laughs> I know, Mittens, I know. Let's deliver this stupid briefcase and start our new life. Sound good? Sundown Undead will be right back after this short break. It's a dark night. We won't Sir, I apologize, but we don't have any sweets available with a hot tub. Listen here. I took the virtual tour on your website, and it showed an image of a hot tub inside the room. I'm not familiar with the images you're talking about. It was a picture of a hot tub, with two champagne glasses and a bottle of champagne. Okay, listen, Mr. Mundy. We don't have a room for you that matches that description. You'll have to settle for a room without a tub. Or if you'd prefer, I can give you a refund. Hold on just one minute, Mr. Mundy. Or can I call you Stu? Who the fuck are you? I've already paid the valet, mate. And no. Mr. Mundy will work fine. Of course, of course, Mr. Mundy it is. I'm the hotel manager. What Claire is trying to say is that the room from the photo is currently occupied. We're renovating each room individually, you see, and we just have not updated all of our suites yet. That sounds like a load of shit, eh? So... What are we going to do about this? Well, I'd love to offer you a complimentary bottle of our finest champagne, and of course we'd gladly discount your first evening with us. Fine. Have someone deliver the bottle to my room. Please, take my business card, and should any other issues arise, you may contact me personally. <laughs> You've got to be joking. <laughs> your name is Dumbass. Mr. Domas. Well, doesn't that seem fitting? Well, it's <laughs> pronounced Dumbasi. <laughs> Whatever you say, Domas. <laughs> Do you like your job, Claire? Did you see how he talked to us? I don't care how he talked to us. He's a paying guest, and in case you haven't noticed, we're not having the easiest of times filling our rooms these days. That doesn't give him the right to talk to us like- It gives him the right to do whatever he wants. Now, if you plan to keep your job, I'd like to remind you to behave. Another incident like that and you are fired. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Doombossy. Good. I'm leaving for the day and I expect you'll be able to handle the remaining guests. Yes, sir. <sighs> My word, I swear good help is so hard to find these days. Welcome to the Sundown Hotel. Do you have a reservation? Yeah. Uh, Stephen Brooks. Uh, 
Okay, Mr. Brooks. I need your ID and credit card. Here's my driver's license, but I thought my company had their card on file to cover incidentals. <sighs> it's not just incidentals. We don't have a card on file to pay for your room. What? I made the reservation myself with the company credit card. I'm sure you did, but it looks like someone from your office called this morning and pulled the authorization. What? Who? Hold on. Let me check. The note here says a Jerry Blackstone called to revoke authorization. What? Uh, oh, wait. He left a message for you. Here, let me open it. Okay. The note says, ha, ha, ha. What? All right. What else does it say? That's it. Just ha, ha, ha. <sighs> Whatever. Here's my credit card. Okay. It'll just be a minute. Yeah. Okay, here's your key, Mr. Brooks. The Wi-Fi password will be on the desk in your room. Okay, thanks. Can I help you? Mr. Finkman, my boss asked me to meet you here and bring you this briefcase. God damn it, get in here. You better not be here to tell me Jerry can't make it. <sighs> Mr. Finkman, I don't know what arrangements you made with my boss, but I'm just doing what I was told. Doing what you're told, huh? What'd you say your name was? I'm Steven. Look, I I'm sorry if I caught you off guard. I know my boss isn't always the easiest to work with, but I'm sure whatever the two of you were supposed to discuss is in this briefcase. Okay, this is it. One of you will need to come with me, but we need someone to watch the exit. Sorry, but we have specific orders. We need to cover both major exits. You'll have to head up on your own. What? This wasn't part of the briefing. I can't go up there alone. I have no idea what I'm walking into. <laughs> Don't you worry, princess. I'm sure you can handle it. Like we said, we've got orders. <sighs> Fine. I can do this. Welcome to the Sundown Hotel. Do you have a reservation? I'm visiting one of your guests, Mr. Finkman. Which room? I'm sorry, but we take the privacy of our guests very seriously. You'll have to find another way to contact Mr. Finkman. FBI. My name is Agent Daniels. Which room? Hold on. I'll have to call my boss. Well, I guess the phone's not working. You'll have to come back with a warrant. This is a matter of national security. Unless you'd rather me go door to door telling your guests there's a terrorist in the hotel, you'll tell me which fucking room. Fourth floor, room 401. Try not to break anything. Sure, whatever. You just be a good girl and watch the desk. Freeze! Let me see your hands! Okay! <coughs> what the fuck is wrong with him? I don't know, my boss sent me! To do what? He... I was supposed to give Mr. Finkman that briefcase, the, the one on the floor... There must have been something inside of it. Who is it? It's my boss. Answer it. Put it on speaker. Hello? Steven, buddy, hey, how's it going? It's me, your old pal Jerry. Look, you probably have a lot of questions. Things like, Oh my god, what's going on? Why did you send me here? Why am I standing next to a dead body? Oh no, poor me, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Oh shit, is that Finkman I hear? Is he dying right now? Fuck you, Finkman, you prick! Whatever, listen. I wanted to call you to let you know you're probably not going to get out of there. Alive, anyway. What?! I think they said they'd kill anyone trying to leave. <laughs> Why?! I know. What a shame. Damn. It sucks. I really feel for you, you know? 
<laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. One more thing. I wouldn't go near that briefcase again if I were you. There was some pretty nasty shit in there. Dr. Wong was right. Definitely not right for human trials. Okay, bye. That's your boss. Damn it. We have to get him to a hospital. He's dead. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. I can't believe this. What? What's going on? Why are soldiers guarding the exit? Hey! Open the door! Step away from the door! I have one of the suspects in custody. Sorry, Daniels, but we've got our orders! What do you think you're doing? Bang on the glass again, and you're fucking dead! I'm not going to tell you again! The girl at the desk has a radio. Someone should be contacting you shortly. Oh, come on. Shit, are they locking us in here? <sighs> fucking prick. Come on, let's go. The guards at the door, what did they say? They gave me this walkie-talkie and said we were on lockdown. Okay, listen up. Nobody leaves the hotel. All exits are now blocked, and anyone attempting to leave will be killed on sight. I'll say it one more time. Anyone trying to escape will be killed. No exceptions. You may have noticed the phones in the hotel have been disconnected. We also just jammed up the satellite signals around this area. So, as of this moment, your cell phones won't work either. We will communicate with you through this radio, only as needed. Out. Give me that. Hold on. My name is Sarah Daniels. I'm a special agent with the FBI. This is a mistake. You can call my superior, Assistant Director Billings. Hello? Hello, did you hear me? They're not going to answer you. They probably already turned their radios off, and I don't think they care that you're in here. <sighs> I have to contain the body. You're coming with me. Let's go. If we're going to be stuck here a while, can you at least take these cuffs off? Listen, asshole. You're the reason we're stuck in this mess. Just shut up and follow me. Yeah, yeah. It's always my fault. Oh, shit. Where did he go? He was dead. His body was right here. Come on! Get off her, asshole! I can't believe what I'm seeing. Looks like she's one of the housekeepers. He ate through her neck. Is he dead? Are you blind? Of course he's dead. Uh, Shit! Watch out! Uh, I thought you said he was dead! Let's go. You've got to take me out of these handcuffs. Shut up. Not until I know what's going on. Fine. Let's get back to the lobby. I want to be close to the radio. Hello, Sun Dead listeners. Thanks for tuning into Chapter 1. We've got big things in store as we move forward, so you're not going to want to miss that. If you like the show... Please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review and help spread the word. Sundown Undead is written by Carl Baedeker and Jacob Bork. Audio production and design by Mark Rubio and Carl Baedeker. Starring Aria Damaris, Fletcher Armstrong, Isaac Wells, and Leanne Osman. 
It doesn't stop there. We've got so many more incredibly talented actors on the show, and I'd hope you check them out in the written credits in the show description. Guys, if you want to stay up to date with what's going on, you can follow us on social media. Those links are going to be available on our website at www.sundownaudiotheater.com. That just about wraps it up. I'm Carl B. We'll see you next time.